we should have on supply chains, for example, I'll give you a specific example, a China plus one policy. And what I mean by that is that no given company should be totally dependent on China for a supply chain. That's the kind of reason policies that we should have based on our national interest. But we have to rethink that through. They're destabilizing the world. They're working closely with Iran. Um, and I think that it's time for the international community to gather some courage and call out China on, on its malfeasance against human rights internally and in the world at large. Hey folks, William Dez here with Rebel News, currently here in the capital of the country, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And the reason why I'm here tonight is because uh, the Conservative Party of Canada is hosting its last leadership race debate here, welcoming Jean Charest, Scott Aitchison, and Roman Baber. Pierre Poiliev and Leslie Lewis will not be participating. The reason why that is, is because according to them, they believe that it is better for a party and for their own campaign to continue traveling all across the country and try to recruit more and more and more Canadians to join the conservative movement. So we'll only be able to see three of the five candidates here tonight. And of course, Patrick Brown will not be here because, well, he was disqualified. So the debate is about to, to, to begin in a few minutes. Afterwards, there will be a scrum period while myself and other journalists will be asking the candidates some questions about their policies and everything. So let's go see how that goes. Do you regard China uh, as an ally? Do you think it's a competitor and enemy that we should be scared of? Do you think we should be doing more deals with uh, this country? Uh, well, I wish you, you know, your question makes it sound simple. China is a superpower. In our lifetime, we've seen the emergence of China as a superpower. Canada needs to redefine its approach on foreign policy in general, by the way, and on defense and I've spoken to that. And that includes our approach to how we handle our relationship with China. In certain areas, we need to push back on issues of human rights, of spying or industrial spying. In other areas, we need to cooperate. That includes the issue of the environment, on issues like pandemics. So it's, it's not black and white, but we need to first of all define our interest. And what is urgent for Canada, and I will do as Prime Minister, is have an Indo-Pacific strategy that actually includes all of Asia, not just China. Southeast Asia, for example. ASEAN is part of that. Now, we've done a trade agreement with 11 countries within CPTPP. We have a free trade agreement with South Korea. We've now engaged in a trade agreement and trade negotiations with ASEAN, the 10 countries of ASEAN. And that's more than 600 million people and very much a, an opportunity for us. We should have on supply chains, for example, I'll give you a specific example, a China plus one policy. And what I mean by that is that no given company should be totally dependent on China for a supply chain. That's the kind of reason policies that we should have based on our national interest but we have to rethink that through i think i think we have to be very clear on china and and we should not be afraid as conservatives and i certainly will never be afraid to articulate what i believe china is locking down tens of millions of healthy people it's putting ankle bracelets on people china is engaging in in segregation it's sending uh, Muslim Uyghurs to, to, to camps. It's something that the international community is silent about. If we say never again, then it should really be never again. China is stealing our intellectual property. They have uh, attacked and usurped democracy in Hong Kong. They're now eyeing Taiwan. Um, they're destabilizing the world. They're working closely with Iran. Um, and I think that it's time for the international community to gather some courage and call out China on, on its malfeasance against human rights internally and in the world at large. In a campaign mail out, you stated recently that uh, vaccine mandates keep public sector workers safe. Do you believe COVID mandates should, be, uh, should continue to be implemented or do you think it's time for the government to lift them once and for all? And if you've changed your mind from the past two weeks when you stated this in an in a email, why is that? I don't think we've changed our mind. I mean, the fact of the matter is we're probably now entering into the seventh wave of COVID. Every wave has been different. Governments had no playbook. In fairness to all governments, by the way, let's be fair. 
provincial governments, federal government, no one had a playbook in going into this. And they handled every wave based on the information they had. Are we gonna to return to lockdowns? No. And uh, should we impose mandates when we don't need them? Well, the answer is no. But every wave should be treated as such and we should look at the consequences and we should have the maturity and we should have the wherewithal as leaders to make the best decision possible to protect the, the life uh, of Canadian citizens. It's that, that's the way to approach it. There's no other way to approach it. Alberta has, mo has some of the most uh, ethical oil on earth, both in terms of human rights and environmental concerns. Why are conservative leadership candidates uh, tiptoeing and apologizing around WEF climate language like net zero instead of doing the best thing that we could do here in Canada for the environment and sell our oil to foreign countries around the world. Venezuela and Ireland aren't playing these games themselves. Well, you certainly don't get any tiptoeing uh, with me when it comes to um, what I believe is a very misguided uh, net zero carbon policy. Uh, on the contrary, I believe that Canada's natural resources are a blessing and I'm not gonna let oil and gas be canceled. And our natural resources are good, not just for our strategic interest and our economic bottom line, they're great for the planet because Canadians can drive energy cleaner and safer than any other nation on earth. So I'm going to free Canadian oil and gas. Uh, I've been to Alberta three times since this leadership race began. Uh, I have a very robust Western Canada policy and uh, it's, it's not just great for, for Western Canada. I, I believe that the only way that we're gonna get out of the fiscal hole that the Liberals are gonna leave us in is to unleash the economic potential of our country. And I'm going to do that by turning Canada into a natural resources superpower. So there you have it, folks. You saw it yourself what uh, Jean Charest and Roman Baber had to say about uh, China mandate and the energy sector here in Canada where we have some of the strongest and cleanest energy from around the world. Scott Aitchison announced after the debate that he will not be attending the scrum. And the reason why that is is because he said that he has to go catch a plane. So we were only able to question uh, both Roman Baber and Josh Harry. If you want to see everything that we do, all of our coverage of the CPC leadership race, make sure to go and head on to leadershipreports.ca and you'll be able to see all of our coverage there. Once again, folks, to see Rebel News' coverage of the Conservative Party of Canada leadership race, head on to leadershipreports.ca and you'll be able to see everything.